So this next video is about Harley. I've trusted Harley with over a hundred thousand euros of your money. He's delivered radios and now he's delivered thermal optic scopes and night vision. Harley traveled three and a half thousand kilometers from the UK within three days. He collected uh, the night vision and thermal scopes in Rotterdam. I've wanted to do this for a long time. I'm tired of people who only want to support humanitarian. Tired of people who only want to support medical efforts, army medical efforts. People who want to buy more tourniquets. We will always need them. But less and less people are willing to support what we really need. General Patton once said, no son of a bitch ever won a war by dying for his country. He was making other son of a bitches die for theirs. Although three of the thermal scopes have arrived out of the eight we purchased, the other five are insured and they will get delivered. Um, that money is safe. With the three that have arrived, uh, they've gone out to the Territorial Army, uh, to Andre from 28 Brigade, as you guys know him, and um, to another guy as well. Um, he's also from Territorial, from 116 Recon. I used one on a machine gun. I've not fired a machine gun since 2006. By the second shot, after sighted in properly, I hit a target at 500 meters on the range. They're that simple. When the man who told me about thermals, who I know and trust, told me working without one and then working with one, is like Grand Theft Auto in cheat mode. I was sold. This is the solution. As far as the night vision goes, I also gave a set to Andre's company. I delivered two of them in an emergency, uh, or quite quickly, some nights ago. An M113, an evacuation vehicle. They needed them. The driver was able to drive fast and confident. He saved three Ukrainians. We also gave a set to the 50 cal gunner. He engaged three Russian targets. So, plus three Ukrainians, minus three Russians, that equals six in my book. Very well done in one night alone. Harley talks in this video um, about all the deliveries he's done, meetings he's had in the UK with people who are willing to start helping him fund him with his EOD work, and he hasn't even finished the course yet. But from the last video we've done with Harley and his girlfriend, Cara, he raised enough money through you guys supporting him to pay for his EOD course. 7,000 euros for one month in Kosovo. And then he can come back here and work on a four to six week basis. He really wants to work in Kherson region. Um, but I'll let him explain the story to you. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Thanks. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> That's the ship pit. Oh, you like this one? I've never showed anybody yet, actually. I've got to keep this shit a top secret because they can identify them. Uh, who else is it? I don't know. The devil? What was the name of the lad who helped you out with this one? Colin. Colin. Colin from Essex. Colin Tops. Essex boys, eh? Ah. Job all writing off. Northern Scotland's pick it up. How many miles have got on it? 101 miles. And is it, this is the 2.5 litre? Yeah. It's not got much power, or like for acceleration, but she's a f they're fucking solid. Yeah, yeah, it's sound. Been reliable. All right, is this the good shit? This is your good shit. Is, it, is that all of it? That's all of it. Here, come on, let's bring this inside. My top secret generator storage in there. It's got a quarter of a roof. Like, we're not actually running on a generator here. At the Harley. What are they doing there? Come on, come on, come on to my bedroom. Or come on to Rebecca's room with Oleg. Hi Rebecca. Hi. It's Harley. Hi. Oleg. Hi. Come on, right. I'm taking apart not my iFacts. I'm putting together yeah. good iFacts. Oh, yeah. And there's, there's Rebecca's unmentionables. Tactical pink. Alright, let's see let's see what we got here from Seth. Right, you're all prepared. So there were seven thermals in total, right? Mm -hmm. But four didn't four didn't arrive yet. Holy shit. 
thank you card from MSS De Defense, hand signed by Derek Wiseman, whoever that is. So that's the 35 mil funders. Mm -hmm. And we got the rails. Uh, that should fit an AR-10. So let's see what we got here. Work the money maker. Uh, Ukraine ADOPS. Uh, they buy this same model too. And they've got a guy in Estonia who's like an expert on this shit. So I was talking to them the other day. They've got one in Meepo. Right. And, and how much we've got chargers for these as well, didn't yeah, we? You I've bought spare batteries? Yeah, yeah. So it's a 35 box. That's nice. That's very nice. Peter Medicina. Cool, cool, cool. Wow. <laughs> I still see you. You fill them. You fill them in the wrong way. Oh. All right. Yeah, you can't fill. You can't fill them. We're trying to teach Charlie how to make more money on social media to continue his work. He's filling them in Instagram mode, like. So, so these are the NVGs, uh, PSV 14s, and we've got to we've got to take this out tonight and test the, uh, the capabilities of it. Shame you're not staying for the night. We're gonna take them out on the M113. Gonna test in the car and the, out, out in the fields there. Wow. Do you need me to go to her son? Uh, we're gonna Nikolai. talk about that. Yeah. Not her son, but Nikolaev. Yeah. Because my friend Lucy, who's from Surrey, mm -hmm. uh, she used to she used to be a paramedic here. Her old driver just joined 82nd and they need, uh, they need generators. And we'll play with them later, but th there should also be like a like a counterweight on the back. But we'll figure that out because otherwise your heads are like. Yeah, um, there's still some more boxes in there. Yeah. Sure. What? There's more at the bottom below these. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Was, uh, this is really, 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 really cool. We've still got more stuff to come, haven't we? So. Yeah. Uh, four more thermals, mm -hmm. and either Enrico can help with that or. Young Oleg from America, who uh, is back next week. Yeah. Yeah. You always have to watch where you're filming, so it's not like, sorry, mate. There's thousands of dollars here at stake, Harley, <laughs> and, and there's your, your future wife's vacation. <laughs> so what it all comes down to is the size. 35. You can go up to 50. A lot of the guys don't even like working with a 50 mil because they're so big. They're actually more sensitive. Uh, but I want to get down to a 19 mil to put on an AK-74. So then you can engage them when they come close. Nobody's ever really worked on that concept. So with the guide rail on an AR-10 uh, to engage people at 800 meters, that sits perfectly. But for the 19 mil ones for a normal AK, we're gonna work like on a, on a, a high rise rail so they can still use the iron sight in the daytime. And nobody's ever really worked that concept before, but uh, the reality is it's not all the Underwater knife fighter, special forces, superstar, kraken, SSO, a goer who not really goer, and they're actually legion guys who do all the killing. It's the normal guys like Vova and Dima with an AK. They do all the killing and they get killed. But if we can, these are really expensive. If we can get the cheaper 19 mil, they can kill them all day long at 100. Sorry for the grim content, but that's what we're doing now. Three and a half thousand kilometers. So how many days did it take you? You left two and a half. You crossed the channel. Where in Dover? No, Hull. Hull oh, to you'd... Rotterdam. Hull to Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. How long does that boat take? Twelve hours. Right. You meet some right characters on the ferry, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. I used to always take the Irish uh, <laughs> ferry and yeah. I take the big one, the Ulysses, and I'd pay the extra twenty quid uh to go upstairs because you have some smoked salmon and there was no weirdos. You go downstairs, if you're a foot passenger on a ferry there's something there's something wrong with yeah. with the nowadays Ryanair cheap yeah, flights yeah, yeah, yeah. you're doing something you're doing something wrong well on the whole one it's like everyone's just getting smashed everyone's going to the Rotterdam you know, for the day yeah so it's like an all-night party thing that I just lock myself away though so they've got those in Sweden where people take a boat to Finland for the night or you take a boat to Tallinn. the Baltics to Tallinn yeah we did that and you get right smashed and then you go buy cheap alcohol and you bring it home with you yeah yeah, because uh, they get up to orgies and all sorts there. I hear. Yeah, me and, me and Cara went on the uh, oh, did you? on the Finland one, Tallinn Linkus, of it's called. Yeah, so yeah, Tallinn's Finland. How is Cara? 
Yes, you're right, yeah, working hard at home. You've just had some meetings recently with some, some big organizations who, who do help Ukraine and potentially help you. What's that like? Because you're here all the time. Some of them have never even been here. No. What's that like mentally crossing the barrier of I'm in Donbass and you want to help Donbass but you've never been there? Yeah. Um, I think I think it's important um, for people like me to tell the stories and also displaced Ukrainians that are back in the UK. I think that a lot of people don't actually realise how bad it is down here. And I was at a meeting last week in London where as a guest speaker where I met a lot of Ukrainians who have been displaced and one of the questions they asked me is people from the UK don't seem to understand and you know how can I get my message across and I think you know it's important for them just to tell their personal story and I think you know because a lot of these women have been raped and Mariupol girls yeah they are from Mariupol yeah so they got out on the green corridor yeah but lived under occupation quite some time so um I just said it's important for them to, you know, tell the story and the personal stories and, and hopefully that might wake more people up as to what's going on and, you know, um, and obviously explain to the people in the UK as well, who obviously help Ukraine, who've never been here, you know, what the reality of the situation and what, mm -hmm. what, we're, what we're facing as volunteers as well. You know. Are they receptive to that? Yeah, um, see, I get it. Yeah, that, oh my God, we're out of bullets. Uh, no, automat, automat for Peter. You do. <laughs> Resourceful, aren't they, Ukrainians? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I get it quite a lot. Obviously, I get a lot of people reaching out to me, looking to volunteer, looking to come to Ukraine, and and everything else. And you know, I've always said like, don't come, don't come empty-handed. If you can't bring a vehicle, yes. if not, pay for someone to bring a vehicle for you. Um, but also know what what you're getting yourself into as well. And get used to your surroundings, bed yourself in um, slowly. I mean, there's no rush. Mm -hmm. this, this shit's going on for a long time. You know, yes. Throughout probably my lifetime, so, especially the humanitarian side. So, um, yeah, so that, that's the advice that I give people. And obviously have some money, mm -hmm. you know, just even fallback money, you know. So, um, yeah, I do come across it quite a lot and it's important to, obviously for people like myself and yourself to you know make sure that the right information is being dished out and do you so, find most of those people like reasonable like they really want to hear yeah i think a lot of people just flirt with the idea of coming here though you yes. know i think uh, it's always you know i'm coming i'm coming i'm coming but they never actually come yes um i'm sure you obviously get that as well so. not anymore uh, oh, i right. just say i just say I, mean, I just abled the inbox oh right okay yeah, yeah. i don't assist actually yeah and that's only for my mental health yeah, that's yeah, yeah solely yeah so for me i mean i always try and find time for people um especially you know i want ukraine to get as much help as possible you know if everybody could come with some sort of positivity and you know supplies and you know exactly what we need then that you know that'd be great but unfortunately it's just not always the case it's probably about actually about five percent out of a hundred you know that actually yeah. come at this day this now anyway at this time because obviously earlier earlier on in the war there were all sorts of people coming but you tend to find that the the people doing real work and stuff are still here but you've had people because uh, this is something i really want to explore when i go away because uh, I'm going to talk to media, podcast, I've been invited to do a, fa a few things. Um, was it Alan who bought the radios to give to yeah, you, to Alan give Clark. to me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and God bless him, and he did that anonymously, but um, there's so many people who want to help, and they don't just want to give cash, but they might have something very specific that we need. Mm -hmm. Enrico's benefited from that. Yeah. In Germany, if you're German, talk to a German who's doing it. If you're British... Talk to a British lad who, like yourself, mm -hmm. and I've seen on a small scale, more people are getting more empowered from home to help. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I want to see. I want to see you get more support. You're going to work with Johnny from, from Northern Ireland. Yeah, yeah. So I speak with Johnny. So we're going to be doing the EOD and back on to Alan. Yeah. We've got the radios. Alan's actually training to do EOD and he's going to be joining me as well. Like how cool is that? amazing he, I, he's he's done his eod training in america and now he's going to be um 
move into the other training center in Europe. So I obviously train on the... Uh, well, the, you do the same course stuff. with him in Kosovo. Yeah, yeah, he's done it now, I'm doing the next course. So. I'm really envious of it because uh, I see that kind of like as a future for me. Yeah, I'm but I also get it to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but it's it's like there's not enough time right now. Yeah. But I could, because I'm here all the time, because I'm in a medical unit, I can actually clear our Kazavak routes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something I can do now. Yeah. Uh, well, not now because I don't have the training to do it, but that's something you can do for the rest of your life that I could do for the rest of my life here. And there's no end of work in sight. Well, what, like I was saying, one trained EOD technician can save hundreds of lives, you know, maybe even thousands, you don't know. Depends how long you work here. And yes. obviously the, the situation in Kherson and Mikolaev is dire. I mean, um, just this week, uh, seven people have been killed in Mikolaev for mines, farming, because they have no choice but to farm. You know, they don't have the detectors, they don't have this, that. they've just if got to get on with if it. If you can't farm, you can't eat. And also, in her son the other day, uh, the sappers had cleared mines on a road, then overnight, someone had relayed the mines overnight. Ah, oh, the sabotage was. Yeah. Yeah, so that happened three nights ago. So, yeah, so yeah. That, obviously there was found, no one was hurt. Yeah, thankfully, yeah, but it could be like I be, I'm a victim of Russian mines oh, myself personally. Yeah. I'm I'm fine, but mentally I'm not the same person, mm -hmm. and I got off easy. Mm. I also think this sounds silly. Like, who's my best friend in the world? It's my dog. Yeah. Imagine you. Imagine you being at home and you throwing a stick for your dog. I, I shouldn't even think that way. And then she just steps on something steps in something. a field. I mean, the livestock, there's loads of livestock being killed in, in her song at the minute. But the thing is, is the farmers, they have to try and farm because the, the livestock were all dying because the Russians poisoned the water. They threw dead bodies into the water system. Yeah. So, um, obviously, the, live, the that livestock... That can take can't. more than a season for that to clear up in yeah, the watershed. So, yeah, so you've got some uh, colleagues of mine who are now supplying the uh, water pumps and fil filtration systems, so... You know, we're, we're just trying to implement that around Blahodatne village. Uh, yes. And that's what Not to be confused with Blahodatne Solodar. Yeah, so there's about five different Blahodatnes I've learned since I've been here uh, in the last few weeks. So, um, yeah, so, you know, the situation in that village is dying. I don't know if you've seen the video of Dima, Dima getting hit by the man on the tractor the other day. Yeah, because I messaged you about that. I was like, well, what's he doing in Blahodatne? That's yeah, Russian. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, wrong um, village. And that was... You know, that was a farm that a guy had just returned to try and rebuild the village. I mean, you know, and he has been doing it. We obviously ourselves and Sunflower uh, projects, whose colleagues of mine, we've been obviously giving them them the tools to try and rebuild. But after the mine strike, now he's not looking to return back to that village. You know, um, though I suppose he would be. He's lost his left eye, so yeah, yeah, because the incompetent surgeon. Actually, uh, actually, made him lose his left eye. Made it worse than what it actually was. So yeah, that's a real sad thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you've come here to do this delivery. Yeah. Uh, you were you were in Rotterdam. I don't actually know. Is that where Netherlands IFAC is based? Where Seth is? No, Seth's in Groningen in the north. Okay. Yeah. So right, Rotterdam's on the west. Did you actually see him personally? No, no, I didn't have time. Have you ever met him personally? No. But you guys have had plenty of conversations yeah, and yeah. lining up supplies. We do. We have a good circle and a good best trust between us. So yeah, it's really nice because he wrote me once. He says wherever you found Harley, he's a gem. Yeah. Um, but you know that that was a big thing for me. Like uh, your whole purpose to come to see me today. Uh, we didn't pull it off fully successfully, mm. uh, because and that's not your fault. Uh, four of the thermals didn't arrive in time. No, that's right. But this is the biggest purchase I've ever made. Yeah. Single purchase. Three, so we have three NVGs, three thermal scopes that tonight we can start training on the NVGs and maybe even as early as tomorrow we can get to work on the thermals. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many thermal scopes would you say you've brought total into Ukraine? Um, so it, thermals for me has only actually been within the last six weeks. So um, in total, including yours, is about 10. So which 
people need to understand that these things cost a hell of a lot of money. Yes. You know, these are a couple of thousand pounds each. So the very cheapest yeah. one is a thousand. Yeah. So and these this is good kit. I mean the first batch come from London uh, to another unit based in the south and then obviously now yourself. Um, but in terms of tactical kit and everything, you know, it's talking hundreds of thousands. So anybody in theory that in England it's it's perfectly legal to purchase a thermal? Yeah. So anybody who wants to buy one to give to you to bring over to yeah, to me or yeah. another unit, like yeah. like how Alan bought radios, yeah. mm -hmm. in Rico can't buy them because mm -hmm. in Germany they're not legal. Yeah. In Netherlands you can buy them. Yeah. Um. So that that's a possibility if people want to help later on source thermals. Yeah, and I think it's important as well that to get it right, I need plenty of notice. You know, if you know, it's not a case of I'll order it and I'm going to pick it up two days later. I need at least a week based on. The trial and error that we've just experienced yes yeah obviously the one the supplier, supplier delivered one promised to deliver yeah, but didn't get didn't, on time yeah you know, and the five day delay which you know is is a big problem but fortunately we will be able to get it sorted out so especially with you um because you've got a very important mission after ukraine yeah you have to bring some cargo to spain yeah yeah that's right yeah. i shouldn't call cara cargo <laughs> Yeah, so... Um, Tell me about we, that, you're going on holiday. How yeah, was the last time you've been on holiday? Uh, I don't know, actually. Um, we went away to Estonia for like three days a few months ago, but I mean, this is actually our only summer holiday. And I, you know, I've got to be I've got to be fair to Cora. I mean, she, she supports me fully yes. through everything. She works full-time back home. She takes time off work. She only gets 22 days off a year. You know, and, and she's blown them in Ukraine. And she's blown. She's just got about four left already, and you know she only got them holidays in January. So, and she's still not been here for a month. So, if you think about it, it's, yes, yes, it's twenty days she's used in the first two months. So, I think um, I think I owe it to her to obviously do the the Spain holiday, and which you know she's had to pay for them days off as well. She's bought extra holidays to do it. So, um, and then after that, I'm going to Kosovo where I'm going to be training uh, for my EOD. And How much did the course cost in total? Seven thousand. Seven thousand British pounds. Yeah. Okay, so that's like seven thousand five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. The pound ain't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, Twenty five days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's correct me if I'm wrong because not everyone else knows. Uh, there's two qualifications. It's called Mat One, Mat. Two. What does Mat stand for? Yeah, no, Mat's the uh, the actual company, uh, but okay. it's IMAS. So you got IMAS uh, level one, two. What Which is, is field you know operations? What it for? Uh, no, ah. uh, <laughs> I think it's the, I think it's the uh, the awarding body. Okay. Yeah. So um, sure. well, it's like the WBC. Got, yeah. So you've got level one and two, which is like a field operative. Level three, more of a supervisory role, which is something that I will look at doing after I've gained some more experience in Ukraine. Um, and then you've got your level three plus, which is um, I think it's chemical weapons. Really. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they do it all so. You know, well, there have been chemical attacks here we've yeah. had recently in this yeah. area. Yeah, so I think I think for me, you know, I've got to do it right. And, you know, I've got good mentors out there as well who are obviously experienced. Um, you know, I'm surrounded by good people when it comes to this. And I've got the patience, uh, you know, to make sure I do it correctly. So I think um, my goal is to do my one and two, come back here, work as a field operative under other mentors and then i'm gonna go back and do my three my level three yes yes yeah no that's really good and um, then eventually i'll be able to instruct other people how to demine as well which is my long-term goal in ukraine well you can only do this work here like like i asked swampy in december mm. can you help us with 60th brigade clear the routes if need be and he says yeah no problem but the problem is when the ground's frozen that's i right. can't work yeah so you sounds like you're gonna the rest of your summers for the rest of your life are in Ukraine. Yeah, well, I spoke to um, somebody the other week who's part of the police EOD unit, and um, he said I just asked him like how come things like places like Blah and that and stuff haven't been cleared yet, you know, and he just said to me it's um, at the minute we're just clearing the roads. Um, two reasons: one, just in case the Russians come back, you know, at least they'll be stepping on their own stuff. And two, um, obviously the, the ground is frozen, so it's it's hard work getting them out. So it, it, at the minute, it's just main roads that are getting cleared. 
down that. So we can keep somewhere. moving? Yeah. Yeah, it's a nasty game. So. Oh. And obviously there's new munitions as well that are getting studied, so... Um, that have meeting. never been seen before no, this war. No, So I had a meeting the other week with some guys from... Oh, I had a meeting with some guys from uh, Preston University who are professors um, with the aerospace engineering and they're going to make me a prototype drone for clearing mines and they've had, they've had a, lot of, a lot of success in Cambodia for the last seven years working with the Cambodian army and they're doing that for free. For wow. Me. So So that's a university, an engineering initiative. Yeah, in Preston, Lancashire. Yeah. And, they're, and they're getting marked on that and getting their degrees based on, yeah. on helping that. Yeah, demining drones. So what this will do is use uh, technology to map out um, potential mine locations and using sensors and I think it's called LiDAR, um, which is scans the ground and the mines. So hopefully, you know, that'll be How a cool good... Is that? Yeah, that'll be a good development for us. And, and, and for them to build me, you know, one for free and come over here and show us how to use it and operate it and do it properly. You know, so it's breakthrough, mate. It's, Those it's are universities cool. taking initiative. And I don't know how to relay that to the world when I go abroad, but I've, I've been invited to talk at some universities. Uh, it's not confirmed yet, but University of Toronto in Canada, that's mm -hmm. a pretty big school. Eddie Scott, if you know him, uh, he's from Dorset. He's a volunteer here. Oh, yeah, Eddie. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's a sailor, very clever boy. He's up in uh, Constantinople now. I, I think he's an engineer by trade. Mm. And uh, through him and Swampy, there was there was some um, initiatives with universities. I think uh, University of Birmingham. They actually designed diesel heaters to go inside uh, ammo boxes uh -huh. to use in the trench and the blendage in the winter. Yeah. And I don't know how many units got out, but that was a university initiative in England where people said, yeah, let's try to make something practical for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And they're getting their marks on that too. Yeah. Like what an initiative yeah. in your studies, yeah, yeah. You're, you know, which I don't know if it's yeah. boring to you. I, I don't know anything. It's like, no, no, no. No, I, let, let's build, let's actually use our studies and get our marks, but build stuff for the war effort. Yeah. Like, <laughs> nah, fantastic. Yeah, it's good. And you got people good like history. that back in you. Yeah. And it, so it's not just money, it's expertise and passion. Yeah, of course. And that's what we need, obviously, the most here. You know, we need experience, we need people who know what they're doing. And like I said, these guys have won awards doing Cambodia, yes. working with the army, which is even more difficult to rain. And these drones will work perfectly in Ukraine. Of course so, they will. Yeah. Because agricultural, land. yeah, open terrain. Whereas in Cambodia, these drones have been working in the jungle. So it's quite difficult, but out here, you know, we can do big areas. Mm -hmm. fast. Obviously, I'm not an expert yet of how it all works, so I don't want to, you know, go into too much or dish out any wrong information. But as far as I'm told and and, and, and everything, you know, the, these drones have been really good out in Ukraine. So we're just yeah. going to see how it goes. So looking after end of June, um, July, I'm going to look at getting these guys over and, you know, seeing what we can do and get this drone over. I just bought my first drone yesterday, yeah. actually. Um, my friend Dimitri, he's been seeing lots of my YouTube, he's an IT guy. Yeah. IT by night, American, American employed. You know, there's a lot of that here. Mm -hmm. And then volunteer by day. And now he's going back to Kiev and he's working with a drone team who makes, a, the prototype is $1,500. It's a kamikaze drone. Okay. And uh, I've looked at all the specs. For one thousand five hundred dollars, you only need to crash in front of a BMP within ten meters, and oh. strap a seat. For where's the most vulnerable part of a tank? Yeah, the bottom. bottom. Yeah. And uh, well, that's why they spin, don't they? They spin so they can get on the thing. This is it, yeah, but they don't even need to that. because that thing's moving forward. Volgadar, yeah, yeah. Volgadar. Yeah. When the tank advances, that's why it appealed to me. Mm -hmm. What's your longest continuous drive without sleep? Um. I did Manchester to um, Roslau in, in Poland, but I've also done Kiev to Sittard in Holland, which was 33 hours. 33 solid. hours non-stop? Yeah. Just for fuel and a hot dog? Yeah. What What is your preferred drink? Uh, do you like coffee? Do you like yeah, Monster, no, Red Bull? No, I don't do energy drinks at all. What do you do? Do you do class, coffee. class A drugs? Coffee. Just coffee? Coffee and cigarettes. Really? Yeah. Any particular music um, you like on the road? What's, uh, what's, your, what's your playlist like? Um... It's a variety, isn't it? It's like um, 80s, 90s. I like some dance music, which is obviously 
is pretty specific to my area back home. So what, like I mean, Northern Soul, old school no, Northern no, Soul? No, 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 it's like uh, Wigan Pier. Oh, I don't know this no, shit. No, no, you need to, you need to Google it. <laughs> no, I might yeah, check, I might so check like, that out. Um, yeah, it's quite uplifting, so it keeps you going. I sense you have to be like an Oasis boy or something. Yeah, I like Oasis, yeah. I mean, I'm a Northern guy, I so. What's the one I like? Um, what one's the prick, Noel or Liam? Uh, Liam, isn't it? Liam's Liam. the prick and, yeah. and, and Noel's yeah, the nice Noel's the, the nice one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't know about that. They just said some stuff about Sam Smith, aren't they? You know, he's he's lost lost the plot, I think. Because I, I, I know Ricky Hatton and they carried his belts into Vegas for like mm. the fights, like Mayweather, mm. uh, you know, stuff like that. Mm. And it, yeah, it was Liam's the dick. He's like, no, Ricky, I want to carry the better belt. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, and they were arguing over what belt they got to carry before like the biggest night of well, they don't get life. on, I don't think, do they? So I think it's 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 a feud that's been going on for years, but I don't know if they've made up now. I don't I don't who, follow them as much. Who now. knows? Who knows? At the minute, but like, though. even my uncle Ray, who'd be old, seventy eight years old, who'd be like, "Yeah, that Liam Gallagher, he's a yeah, right yeah. prick." That one. <laughs> I mean, even even the nans in England know about yeah. all this, don't yeah. they? N nobody really talks. Nobody, you never hear about Oasis anymore in in the West no. with the West. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get this shit loaded. So you've got Sorted. to do this. You've got a holiday. Uh, got a few days with Cara, and then I'm going to do my EOD training. So um, and then I'll be back. Um, we will be trying to fundraise and stuff for some um, mine clearance kits and uh, mine detectors, uh, Valens, which I found some that are cheap, so um, a good price, which are ex British Army. So um, yeah, it's just a case of we'll keep it going. Um, since I last did the the YouTube with you, did you get good support? Yeah, yeah, I got some good support. Yeah, um, that's pretty much what paid for my mind clearing training. So, my EOD, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, one I YouTube some, video. Yeah, well, and your own efforts. Got yeah, it. yeah. So there was some people, obviously, who donated to me personally, who've donated to me for to start the invasion, um, and you know, um, support from guys like these and. That's brilliant. Oh, yeah. I just did an interview yeah, with Ignot right. I'm going to put up soon. And a lot of people don't like the limelight to be off them. Mm -hmm. But what I learned in the war, the more you show other people, it's not like zero sum. It's like the more support they get, the more support I get. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, and also I, I don't want to, I'm not a doomer, mm -hmm. but let's say I die tomorrow. People need to know other people to something because this is yeah, bigger than this is bigger than you and me. Yeah, yeah. But I ain't dying to. I'm even my my four by four come from Colin in Essex, and Colin found me through you. So. So that's. Yeah. That's it, mate. Yeah. One yeah. guy who's seen it and couldn't help. Yeah, and I was like sat there because we started a fundraiser for a four by four, but you know I was at one point thinking like you know this is gonna take a long time you know because I wasn't sure if we were gonna get the. The full amount so that, that was needed but well, it Colin, all, it Colin all reached out Colin reached out and keep yeah. the camera rolling yeah it, it was only because I, I drove over a couple of any personnel mines that I got big so yeah, I'm thinking yeah. maybe if I can maybe if I can lose a leg and be like Johnny mm. Depp like Captain Jack Sparrow yeah. imagine how successful we'll be then. <laughs> yeah and you, I think it's important as well you know that obviously we're sharing other stories of other volunteers as well you know um, and the people who, who do the work out here, you know, the hard work, and like I always say, you know, volunteers are the hardest workers out here. Well, I want to do some videos when I go home of the actual volunteers in Sweden and shit who yeah. pack the boxes yeah. and bring it, because if people don't want to come here, they can say, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. And then guess what? Their, their, their family's like, oh, what are you doing now helping Ukraine? Yeah, and they talk to their grandmothers, their aunties. Yeah, you want to chip in 50 quid? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the way ahead. Yeah. All right, let's get so, the hell yeah. out of here. Yeah, well... Yeah, thank you. Cheers, man. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Fuck, you look tired. You look worse than me almost. Do I? Man. Nah. Hi, Oleg. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. I'm going to take Harley to my bedroom, Hi. my office. Hey. I'm going to get my flags out of the, uh, out of the band, Hold on, I got something for you. Oh, wait. Right. So this is what you got to give the lad. New Anchor Power Bank. Supposed to be one of the good ones. Do you like it's classy yeah. the way I live here? So, Starlink radios, uh, probably like maybe five to ten lights should get minimum twenty four hours. Two hour fast charge, five hour slow charge. Am I talking that one there? 
Yeah. yeah. You bring that to the boys in, uh, uh, in Mikolaev. Mm -hmm. So Harley got me this, got a good deal on a British Osprey. Uh, 400 pounds, Garfield had it. Probably took about a month to get here. And uh, I've got soft, hard Kevlar in the inside, soft Kevlar shell. I've got steel plates in the side, for my side plates. And I'll show you here, she's always been in every one of my armor. Uh, you know how hard it is to get actual pictures printed this day and age from digital? Mm. But my second last day before I left Sweden, I got all my, my Mossa pictures. Do you know how many kids taken out of Solodar, these pictures kept calm? And uh, yeah, she keeps me safe. You all do so soft, Mossa. Anyway, thanks for bringing this one over, mate. No worries. <laughs> All right. Oh, I wouldn't mind a pot noodle. Is that where you live off of? No. Legion. 